Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, American military. If you haven't yet heard, the efforts of our military have made us safer this week when it was confirmed that through a raid, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS, is dead. But of course the leftists, who don't care about this nation at all, want to bemoan this thought and blame Trump for doing his job. Let's blow the idea out of the water, or cave, whichever. I'm Katie Petrick, and this is Healthy Republic. Ding dong, the terrorist is dead. And not just one terrorist, but two, as confirmation came in that on Sunday, Islamic State spokesman Abu al Hussein al Muhajir was dead. He was being touted as one of the potential successors to al Baghdadi. In other words, our troops were two for two. He scores! Not quite a hat trick, but I'm not complaining. On today's show, we're going to break down the reaction to the raid and how we truly have two tales of America as evidenced by the responses the sane, and the left. But before we get to that, we were given an exclusive report from Satan himself, who took a break from dancing in the pits of hell just after Al Baghdadi arrived on Saturday night. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? (laughs) Yes! Now to give a quick outline so everyone understands the sequence to the amazing work done by our military and also the Syrian Kurds who assisted. The raid operation in Syria was named after Kayla Mueller, who is an American humanitarian aid worker serving with Doctors Without Borders. She is believed to have died in 2015 after being raped and tortured by al-Baghdadi beginning in 2013. Kayla's efforts and her suffering were much more courageous than anything al-Baghdadi ever did, as proven by his death. The 48-year-old didn't stand up for anything, and when American troops drew in on him, he detonated his own suicide vest while hiding in a tunnel in his Syrian compound surrounded by three of his children, killing them too. President Trump is absolutely correct in calling him what he was, a coward. He will never again harm another innocent man, woman, or child. He died like a dog. He died like a coward. The world is now a much safer place. There's only one proper response to give as an American citizen who cares about the country and all of its fellow citizens. Yes! 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 Like any good story, there is a dog involved. In this case, we have a heroic dog who followed Al Baghdadi into the tunnel. When the bomb went off, the tunnel walls collapsed, injuring the dog. But unlike al-Baghdadi, this dog served a purpose and will make a full recovery. President Trump declassified the photo of this hero so the world could see just how amazing the dog is. And now we know the Belgian Malinois name is Conan after comedian Conan O'Brien. And Conan will be making an appearance at the White House in the near future, according to President Trump. Meanwhile, this operation, and yes, even Conan, has drawn the ire of the left, which is to say it's a standard week in 2019. The outrage included the usual suspects, politicians, celebrities, and the media. The Democrats complained they were left out of the loop about the raid. Former National Security Advisor Susan Rice complained that former President Barack Obama should have been notified, but not that George Bush should have been notified. And then many in the so-called news argued that Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, among others, should have been told. I can only imagine why the Trump administration would want to leave any Democrats in the dark about a very dangerous and important foreign affairs mission that could have grave implications if any leaks were to occur. I, I just don't know. And then the Washington Post came along and said, hold my soy latte. Washington Post kept blundering itself in headlines, tweets, and just in general. First, they put out a headline announcing al-Baghdadi's death. It read, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, austere religious scholar at helm of Islamic State, dies at 48. Austere? Couldn't have written serious, but went to the old thesaurus and took the extra time to think, I should call this terrorist austere. Look at him. He's like, austere? Really? You're an idiot (laughs) and a scammer. One of the Washington Post columnists, Max Boot, then deleted a tweet that said Al Baghdadi could not have died a coward, as Trump claimed, because Al Baghdadi blew himself up. Just a bit outside. That brings us to the baseball fans of the Washington Nationals and Houston Astros who decided to boo and chant, lock him up, at President Trump during Game 5 of the World Series in Washington, D.C. 
This game was less than one day after the raid that many of them probably had no idea even occurred. I think, thank you for giving the order, Mr. President, is what they were attempting to chant, but there were just simply too many syllables. And the media continued its pursuit as the days continued this week, with some claiming Big Daddy a martyr. Now, how is that even possible, you're wondering? Well, I believe it was the late, great Robin Williams who said it best. He knew that these martyrs won't be receiving what they hope for when they kill themselves and take others with them. Well, one day we get Osama bin Laden, he goes through the gates of heaven. There's George Washington waiting, going, how dare you defile that which we created, and starts wailing on his ass. Seventy other members of the Continental Congress come down and start kicking the out of him. And then he's going, what is this, where are the virgins? Seventy-one Virginians, you ass. Oh. I really miss Robin Williams, in comedy for that matter. All we have left is Saturday Night Live, which managed this week to be even less funny than usual, with a poorly timed mocking of President Trump in a sketch suggesting Trump would make ISIS great again. President Trump sadly missed the sketch because he was in the Situation Room watching as our troops helped make America safe again. Sorry, not sorry, SNL. Which now brings us to the most juvenile of the assertions from this week involving, once again, dogs. While the president was doing his job, old Joe Biden was over yonder trying to get into the White House by claiming he'll bring his dog with him so that a pet could be back in the White House. No thanks, Joe. We have a really good dog already in service to the American people. There's Conan, looking all cute. Not austere, as the post may indicate, but they don't know what a great dog looks like. And anyway, Joe, you are already Obama's pet, so there's always that to consider. But, in full disclosure, I must tell you what you just saw was not, I repeat, not a photo of President Trump putting the Medal of Honor around a dog's neck. Again, I'm just going to repeat it one more time. That is a photoshopped photo, and it's the Medal of Pawner. Like a paw. I don't want any more media pundits getting their undies in a bunch over this photo. It's not worth it. Okay, it really is kind of worth it. It's pretty funny. Stephen Herman of Voice of America jumped in with the outrage, but HuffPost, Washington Post, and the New York Times, and all of its journalisming, actually got so uptight about this wonderfully photoshopped photo by the Daily Wire that they called James McLaughlin, the original recipient in the photo, wanting to know just how offended he was. The Vietnam veteran simply responded that he was not offended by another hero. McLaughlin is also a self-described dog lover who said he looks up to Conan for the bravery showed. And that's the icing on the cake of this week of being proud to be an American. With Veterans Day just a week and a half away, take the extra time to reflect on how much the American military does for this country and keeps us safer than we will ever truly know. This week was just one example of what they do every day. Now, we at Freedom Project truly care about America, and we know you do too. We hope you would consider helping keep us afloat and providing truth and common sense by joining our Patriot Club. For a tax-deductible $25 per month gift, you can keep the cameras rolling. And, and, we'll send you some pretty sweet swag. But not just once. Oh no, we'll continue sending you the most American of items every quarter as a reminder that you are awesomely American. And now, most importantly, until next time, stay healthy America.